stab, parry, and block like a Jedi. Obi-Wan cannot. Whatever Tatooine. Lincoln Sky Loser. Minoc. Tauntaun. Nerf Herder. Chawa Hugger. Moisture Farmer. Admiral Acne. Dude. I'm sorry. Wield a lightsaber. Talk trash. Star Wars The Clone Wars Lightsaber Duel for we. The power of the lightsaber is in your hands. Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we're going back to another set of Star Wars games to celebrate the conclusion of Kenobi, that finale. <sighs> Episode 3 is my favorite Star Wars movie. Let's get this all started with a hot take. So I enjoyed that series thoroughly, although... I did have some problems with the writing and some of the action scenes were lackluster and that's coming from someone who knows next to nothing about film and TV. I watch it extremely casually, unlike video games, which I'm heavily critical of. So if I noticed it, I can only imagine how it was for some of you out there. Anyway, because Kenobi's over and I saw so many people loving our prequel video for Star Wars, I thought we got to go back to the era of the Clone Wars and talk about those video games. We got four to go over today, some not so good, one in particular really, really good that I'm excited to put on your radars. So welcome one, welcome all. If you're feeling nostalgic, consider hitting the subscribe button as that's what we're all about here. A lot of retrospectives, throwbacks, and the occasional current review for Nintendo Switch. So with that, sub up if you've been around here for a while. Thank you. Now, let's talk about some Clone Wars video games. So the animated show is one that I really do like, I'm four seasons deep now, and as a diehard Star Wars fan, that makes me sick to my stomach. I, I should be done with this thing now, uh, but I'm not, so I need to fix that. But I'm four seasons deep, this kind of works in my advantage because what I've seen so far is kind of where the games are covered. This is especially hilarious because as I said before, the series has only gotten popular over time, and for a lot of people, better. The opening seasons of Star Wars Clone Wars were not fantastic to many people. I've enjoyed it quite a bit, but I know I'm very biased. So it's interesting to see all these games are based off some of the opening seasons of this show, but as the life of the show went on, they didn't make any more games about it. Probably because they didn't do that well, and some of that's really not the show's fault or the brand's fault, it's the quality of the game. So, hey, speaking of which, let's get into what is referred to as one of the worst Star Wars video games ever, Star Wars The Clone Wars, Republic Heroes. I love the cover art for this, the warm colors, Obi-Wan, Anakin, the clones up front. I just look at this box art and go, y you can't mess this up. This is clearly going to be a great game. You flip it over to the back, live the Clone Wars and play as your favorite Jedi and clone troopers in a brand new story. Now, one thing that many of us love about the Clone Wars, and you'll see it across all of these cover arts, is you have like Ayla Sakura here, Mace Windu, and they're like the front-facing characters of this series, and they finally get explored where they were really interesting in the movies like Episode 2 and 3, but you didn't get to see them much, and in a lot of ways, like Kit Fisto is kind of just a meme in the prequel movies, but this show gives them an opportunity to really shine, and the games possibly too. It says, intense Jedi combat, leap and slice your way through enemy lines with acrobatic powers of a Jedi. Wield an impressive arsenal of weapons from rocket launchers to thermal detonators and join forces. Fight alongside a friend on any mission at any time with drop-in, drop-out co-op gameplay. So it was one of those shared screen co-op games where y'all were locked to the same screen. If one of you was on one end of the screen and one was on the other, it would really widen the camera. Anyway, as we see here, we have Anakin on the disc art, no Obi-Wan, and then the manual. The manual itself, black and white, cool imagery throughout though. I really do like that. This is an original story set in the Clone Wars universe. It's between episodes, or I'm sorry, not episodes. I'm, I'm in my movie mode right now. It's between seasons one and two. And overall, what the manual goes through is some of the attacks that you can do. Uh, there's a lot of them because there's different character types. There's Jedi and clones you can play as. We'll talk about each of them. And of course, they go through what these abilities are. Again, we'll highlight those. Some of the rewards that you can spend the points you collect in the levels on. And that's really it. Nothing crazy. And then a promotion for the complete first season on DVD on the back of this manual. So not bad. Got this for about 10 bucks. These games are extremely cheap, which is why there's going to be one in here that's even cheaper. Then I'm going to tell you all to hop right on. But let's talk about this one for now. I remember playing this 
many years ago in high school, and I had not watched the show, so I just picked it up because, again, I love Star Wars. And, you know, this is a game that, um, yeah, it's it, it leaves a lot to be desired, that's for sure. I don't know if it's the worst Star Wars game I've played. There are other ones out there, like Connect, but... It is up there. It was during a dark time for Star Wars games, I remember that. We weren't getting many great ones like we did in the early 2000s. And this was kind of just a, another blemish on the legacy of Star Wars, despite the show slowly picking up steam. Some things I did like about it, though. I loved how you could hop on the back of Super Battle Droids and control them and have them shoot their droid friends. This is a great mechanic. I'd love to see it in more modern Star Wars games because I felt like it made the battlefield more interactable. The problem with this game is that because of the way the camera was locked, a lot of times you'd see me double jump and fall into a pit. There are a lot of platforming challenges that are very specifically placed and you have to aim just right, but you can't center your camera behind your character and make sure you're landing in just the right area so there's a lot of jumping and failing and when you have to do that in combat where you have to double jump and press x to get on the back of a super battle droid it didn't feel great when you whiffed a lot of times and then it was kind of confusing why it was a mechanic when you could just wipe them out in a couple of hits anyway it was usually so that you could take out a ton of battle droids and then take out the super battle droid all in one fell swoop but still a cool mechanic nonetheless so pretty much the Jedi you play as are as you'd expect, right? It's just beat em up combat, right? There's some force powers you can use. It feels a little underwhelming when you think about a year before this game, you had something like Force Unleashed where you were blowing down entire TIE fighters and whatnot. But this game's like pew, 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 force push. Yeah, it really, really sucked back then. But especially nowadays when you have so much to compare it to, it, it does not age favorably. The part that I thought was actually pretty cool that I wish they expanded upon was when you're playing as the clones. So we have great clone based video games, right? We have the Clone Wars video game, not this one, but the Clone Wars vehicle based one from the original Xbox. Then you also have the Republic Commando games and that's a first person shooter, right? So when this first fires up and you're playing as the clones, it's sort of a twin stick shooter, if you will. It's exactly how it plays. And I'm like, this could be kind of cool if they really flood the battlefield. But they don't. They stagnate the pace. They make it like you crouch behind cover and you shoot. You throw nades and it gets a little janky when you're trying to crouch but aim one way and your character's like shooting backwards. It's, it doesn't feel great, but it's a cool idea because what they're trying to do is make it where all these different mission types feel interesting and different. And they're gradually rolling out new mechanics. So it's fun as a kid's game, as a young adult. I'm honestly okay. So that's one game that I know a lot of people don't like. I don't hate it, though. That's the thing I want to make clear. I don't hate it. And maybe it's because this is what I call an achievement farm game. As I was playing this game, it's like, boom, achievement. Two for 45 Gamer Store. Boom, you just got another 15. You got another 10. Reminds me of Avatar Burning Earth. It's like, yeah, this game's not that great, but you just gave me a 1,000 Gamer Score, so salute to you. This game kind of does that. Plus, they have Easter eggs that I love. So... Y'all know I love Republic Commando, and guess what? You could put on, like, Sev's helmet. So I'm walking around in these cutscenes with Sev's helmet on, like, a clone trooper. It's way bigger than his body, and then suddenly Obi-Wan has it on. I'm like, oh, it carries over even to this. This is great. So I love that they even put that in the game. They did a couple of cameos for the, the Republic Commandos inside the show, which made me so happy to see. So to me, hey, worth picking up just for that. Support my Republic Commandos. All right. Here's the one that I thought was really cool. My friend Jimmy, who does the thumbnails for this channel, put me on to this one. I've never played it before up until now. It's called Star Wars The Clone Wars Jedi Alliance. It's exclusively for the Nintendo DS. Two Jedi fight stronger than one. Fight as a pair of Jedi to battle Separatist Force in an original story exclusive to the Nintendo DS. Wield your lightsaber with the stylus. Be your favorite Jedi from the new Clone Wars film and TV series and deliver unique combo attacks with different Jedi teams. Yes, a lot of this was for the movie hype, as you can see here, cartridge, and then the manual. And the manual stays winning like this game does. So it's nice and colorful. You've got kind of a synopsis of the story, what happens to set it up. We'll talk about that in a moment. All the playable Jedi in the game. So Anakin, Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, kind of what I was saying earlier, putting spotlights on Jedis that you really didn't think too much of during the movies, like Plo Koon or Kit Fisto are pretty big parts of this game. And it's just 
all the basic stuff you've seen before starting new game you know tips on the hud actions you can perform in the levels like rapid attack stunning an enemy some of the mini games that you can do here with the jedi action sequences which are a cool code word for quick time events uh, control panels r2d2 hacking stuff and that's really it with a promotion for the movie here on the back so pretty cool stuff there this game is awesome got it for seven dollars on ebay and I highly recommend this one. It's about a five to six hour game. It's one of those DS games, right? Where if you bought it as a kid, you paid full price, you'd be done with it in a weekend and go, well, that was fun. It reminds me of TMNT in 2008, I think is when the movie came out. I bought it for my PSP. Tragic, tragic, tragic. I, I finished that game so fast and I remember being in complete disbelief. We'll talk about that in another video because I'm sure we'll talk about the older TMNT games later on. This game may provide that feeling, but because it's so cheap, won't really matter. This is high quality DS work. The cutscenes are awesome. And I mentioned how you get to play as whatever Jedi you want. When you select them and you prepare for your mission, they actually appear in the cutscenes and change the cutscenes based off who's there. So for me, just experimenting, because like you're always playing as Anakin and Obi-Wan. I'm like, let me play as Plo Koon and Kit Fisto as a team. And there's so many cutscenes of them interacting, talking about what's happening in the mission. Little instances of gameplay where there's just audio lines exclusive to them being there. I was impressed by the level of effort there. And I thought maybe that's where a lot of the focus went for this game. But then you start playing and you're like, wait, this is really, really good. So it's a stylus-based DS game. I know that may sound stupid at first when I say that, but there are some DS games that just use the DS hardware, but kind of don't mess with the stylus. They're like, yeah, use the thumbstick, use the D-pad, use the face buttons. The, the bottom screen's just kind of there. We're focused on everything else on the top. This is one of those games where you're gonna be using the stylus to walk around. I've never been a fan of those types of games, but I'm willing to make an exception here because when the lightsaber kicks off, oh my God, oh my God, it's fresh. So what happens is you're side to side, like the camera rotates. That's first of all cool, creates a cinematic feel. Then you start mashing the screen and you're all swinging lightsabers at each other. Then you break the defense down. And this is where it kind of turns into a 2D fighting game. As you ready your stance and you're like, okay, here we go. I'm gonna do a high, high, low, low attack and lay out this sick combo. And it becomes a fighting game really fast. And I just love the routine there. Is it a little, I guess, screen mashy when you're trying to break through the defense? There's no strategy to that. Yes, you're just mashing away. But there's certain points where you'll get into a lightsaber clash and you'll have to really tap the screen fast to fight them off. And it's the introduction to the Night Sisters, which is obviously something that many of us watching Clone Wars are familiar with now. But this is when they were kind of a new thing for many people. So an original story based off of them, this new Jedi style threat. They're stealing these crystals that are being brought to Coruscant for the Padawan to build their lightsabers. And we're like, why are people stealing crystals? And you're learning about this new enemy faction that's not quite the droids. It's not quite the rebellion. So it was refreshing at its time, but to have a whole game based around that is really cool. But I just can't compliment enough the kind of co-op focused gameplay that a single player game here has. There's Jedi assist attacks. So when one of your teammates, like let's say Kit Fisto was attacking someone, I would leap over to the other side by tapping on the enemy and I do an assist attack. And it just felt like you were in sync with your partner and the Jedi felt really powerful. So I love this game a lot. It, it was really, really impressive going through it for the first time. And especially some of the mini games too. They're fun, they're gimmicky, but they're fun, right? Like there's one where you're using a control panel and you gotta match up symbols and colors and drag them to certain corners. I just, it's one of those things that again, it, it's cool it's there. And I like how much variety there is in the gameplay. Otherwise, it kind of does in its exploration remind me a little bit of this bad boy here right so when you're running around the level in this game you're just kind of forced down a very linear path you have to jump in very specific areas same thing here but it's more acceptable in a ds game you'll just click certain areas that are glowing purple and you'll hop up to them not much to explore but still this game is awesome highly recommend you give it a look because i think you'll enjoy it it's about a five to six hour game so you can bang it out in the weekend it's kind of how i feel about the episode three game over on DS and Game Boy Advance where that's like a one hour, two hour game, but I've replayed that game so many times because it's such a great side scroller. This kind of gives me that vibe. It's just a, a hidden gem exclusive to the DS, really cheap. So definitely give this one a look if you're feeling some Clone Wars action. And again, original story where as someone who hasn't wrapped up the Clone Wars show, and I have seen a little bit of it, 
but at this point it's been so long i think since like last year that i finished season four that i'm just like okay uh, i'll get to this eventually i don't know why i stopped there's something wrong with me clearly but uh it's it's kind of a distant memory now outside of some arcs in the show uh, this was still really acceptable there was no need to like call back knowledge from the show or any movies next i don't have a wii so i do apologize for this but we're going to fix that soon. I want to talk about Star Wars Clone Wars lightsaber duels. This was exclusive to the Wii. And this was such a great idea, right? Kind of taking what we saw in the Episode 3 video game on PS2 and the original Xbox, where you would fight with your friends in these lightsaber duels with characters that, you know, you, you wanted to experience more but didn't have games based off of them so you could fight like Mace Windu versus... I guess Anakin, you know, a popular character, but you get my point. Like, playing as Mace Windu was really cool. And it was amazing because in this 3D action game, they had a really fun fighting mode. And what happens here is with lightsaber duels, they say, let's take this roster of characters from the animated show and let's make a 3D fighting game around that with the Wiimote and kind of make combos that you do with the motions. Unfortunately, it stumbles a little bit i remember having a lot of trouble like trying to get combos to go through because that that was one thing i think a lot of people forget in hindsight with the wii is like doing specific motion gestures to get things to happen was frustrating it was easier when it was something like i always think of uh, twilight princess where it's just like wave your wiimote you're attacking right but with this game you need specific wand movements if you will inputs to make sure that you would do specific combos and it felt good when you were pulling it all off. Like, it was a very satisfying fighter at times. Uh, but all I could help but think of when playing it is, man, it would be so cool if we got, like, think of, like, a Soul Calibur style fighter, right? Like, I, I'm usually not a big 3D fighter guy outside of Tekken. I love Tekken. But I'm usually not big on the 3D fighters. But Soul Calibur is one that I also really like in the 3D space. And it's, you know, especially that's one that uses weapons a lot, right? And they, funny enough, have had guest characters for Star Wars in the past with Darth Vader as well as Yoda. And it was so cool to see that. It's one of my favorite things about Soul Calibur. I think many of you agree, right? The system exclusive guest characters. It was awesome to see. But anyway, I would, it just made me think of wanting a Soul Calibur style Star Wars game rather than what we got here, which was kind of just like a, this feels okay when it's working, but overall I want more. Uh, but it's a, a fun little game very cheap five bucks you can easily get it online again apologies i don't have this one complete in box i don't have a wii so i'm not trying to just waste a potential purchase of someone else out there on the market just to have it here when i don't even have the console to play it and capture gameplay for all of you so that's one you want to definitely check out now another one that's on the list of great clone wars video games one that many people actually consider possibly the best lego star wars game is this lego star wars 3 the Clone Wars. Now, you may recognize this copy here. Uh, this came in a GameStop haul, one of our first ones. So let's take a look at the complete box experience if you didn't get to see it in that video. The saga continues. Build, battle, and laugh your way through the Star Wars universe like never before. It's funny they emphasize laugh here because for those of you now who have played Skywalker Saga, one of the best games of the year, there's some moments they go really hard with the emotions, and I, I wasn't a fan of it. I was like, mm, y'all kind of got the wrong memo here. Go make a different game if you're trying to make Lego Star Wars series. Uh, but anyway, it says, Play in levels spanning the entire Clone Wars era, including seasons one and two of the hit animated TV series. Build your army and defend your base in the biggest Lego Star Wars battles ever. Brand new multiplayer modes enable you to play with your friends in all new ways. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is before we even crack up with the manual the size of the battles in this game are awesome there are moments where they're flooding the screen with enemies and it's really impressive that the game is running as well as it does i guess just again with the amount of particle effects and animations and things happening in the background that wow it's kind of surprising that this runs really well with everything that's happening but it did and it just goes to show that tt games is one of the most rock solid developers that we have in our industry right now they're really really good at what they do and it's why they continue to put out bangers like star wars skywalker saga so cracking it open here we have the discard on the right nothing too different from what you've seen on the cover art and then we got the manual on the left yes gamestop did send me a manual surprise surprise the manual here isn't fantastic you got the brick kind of decal on the corners of the 
manual, but that's really it. It just tells you about Xbox Live, how to contact LucasArts if you ever need to. And that's really it. There's a tear on the back, but there's some promotions for Legos in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> but what is there to say that hasn't been said about Lego Star Wars, right? I mean, build, battle, laugh your way through the universe. I mean, the back of the box really said it for me, but the main thing I wanted to highlight were those huge, large-scale battles. Had a lot of fun with those. Uh, this was one that I got a funny story about. When I bought this game, right... I knew it was Lego Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. I'm like, oh, they, they made a whole Star Wars game based off The Clone Wars. And I'm thinking the movie, right? Because I told you all, like, I, I didn't watch the show for a while. So I pick it up. And I'm, like, so confused. I'm like, I don't remember this from the movie. What is happening here? Yeah, I'm. It's a complete idiot move. Like, a long-term idiot move as I'm playing through the game going, like, I don't recognize any of this. And, you know, eventually, within the first, like, hour or so, you just look it up. And you're like, oh... The show, okay. You know, heaven forbid, I read the back of the box. It's funny how far I've come now, right? Now I'm like nitpicking stickers and stuff on my box art, but meanwhile, I couldn't be bothered to read the back of the dang thing. But yeah, that was a mistake on my end, but it was a cool mistake because you ended up playing a, a really fun game. And again, this is still one of those games worth playing. The old LEGO games still have charm, even with Skywalker Saga existing, uh, just because of the mumble, the, the comedic timing of it all. I think that some of the puzzles are really great in these games, especially this one. The scale of the battles is also really cool. The one thing you're going to miss is the combat. I think the combat in Skywalker Saga was a ton of fun. It was very DMC-esque, if you will, and it didn't really have to be that. It definitely needed to be improved, but it didn't need to be like Devil May Cry, but it was, and it was awesome. So... I enjoy this one a lot, and I think a lot of you will still enjoy these older LEGO games as time moves on because they have a certain charm to them. But ladies and gentlemen, those are all of the Clone War games that you're seeing here, minus, of course, the lightsaber duels game. Uh, these are all fun in their own ways. The one that I strongly recommend is Jedi Alliance. I think this game is awesome. It's great for its price, especially. And then if you're feeling another hankering for a Lego game, this one is worth playing. And it's not in the Skywalker Saga, so I didn't mention that either. You might want to check this out just because it's not in there. Of course, you're going to get Clone Wars content in Skywalker Saga, but not from the animated show. So that was one of the cool little surprises there. But overall, a fun set of games to talk about a great show that I uh, I definitely need to finish. I'm sure I'll see a lot, a lot of that in the comments. But that's all I've got to say on Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and its video games. What do you feel about these games? Have you played any of them? Sound off in the comments down below. Other than that, I look forward to seeing all of you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.